Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, and you're listening to The Cindy Cochran Show. We are here Monday through Friday, 10 to 11, and we are just, you know, waiting for you to join us on our Facebook page because The Cindy Cochran Show, that is where you can ask some questions or ask what's going on. Uh, what are you talking about, lady? I don't understand the word that's coming out of your mouth. You can do those kind of things on the Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. Uh, Cochran, C-O-C-H-R-A-N, to make sure you know where you're going. But um, uh, we love that. And, the, and suggestions that you have of who you'd like for us to talk to. And uh, and then if there's uh, some like a subject matter or anyone uh, that you feel like, I, you know, that I'm besmirching and I'm, I'm saying the wrong thing or I'm not saying the right you know, uh, con- uh, I don't have the right concept about the whole deal. It's okay. You can certainly uh, let me know. But I, uh, I, you know, it's Thursday, which is the new Friday. And this evening, we've got some new movies coming out. And I love the movies. And I'm so excited about this one coming out tonight. Angry Birds movie. The Angry Birds movie. How many of you have played Angry Birds? And now you're going to have a voice to that character it's going to make you bond so much more to playing that uh, that game now the kids don't play it as much anymore but they still love it they just they, they love the angry birds stuff so we're going to go see what kind of movie and it says it's supposed to be like um the lego movie I, I the lego movie was great it was amazing it was terrific but this i don't see so much so we'll we'll see uh so it starts this evening at uh, most of the theaters around town uh we start our Friday movies, Friday opening movies on Thursdays now. Money Monster, I still haven't seen that yet. And Connor almost gave it away yesterday, started talking about it. I just, I, I don't want anybody to talk about it because I want to see it, like, from the beginning and and not be uh, speculating on things. But the, uh, the other one is uh, Neighbors 2. If you saw Neighbors 1, there is something wrong with you. Seriously. I mean, I understand Zac Efron is beautiful has a you know amazing body and he keeps his shirt off most of the time and he even uh, tells you how you can get one more pack in your stomach if you just have a six pack he can he in the movie he uh, teaches you how to get up I just saw that on a trailer but uh, so that those are the ones that are out now and uh, that's something that's going on the others have have been out a long time uh, the darkness <clears throat> the darkness is coming out that's a new one and that looks like it's gonna be a um, you know like a scary show what do you think it's uh, it says horror horror and uh, I don't know we'll see we'll see if that's gonna be scary or not but anyway those are the ones that are that are starting uh, today tonight and for us older people if you don't want to be there with the teenagers you go on thursday night nobody i mean it's just older people that go there usually and before the summer starts because then they start going whatever night they want to right now it's usually delegated to friday nights or saturday nights but you can go tonight and have a peaceful you know evening and not have a lot of people all around you okay so uh that's what's happening in the theaters and uh, i hope you get to go and have a great time and eat some popcorn for me now in in other news um uh, the big news is happening and everybody is talking about it and you will i mean what happens when when these events occur is that every news station takes it and they run with it and now they're calling in all the experts and all that the um, Egyptian airplane that went down and it's Egyptian air and it's a plane Egyptian airplane went down uh, right after it had taken off from Paris uh, and it uh, went down t- just dropped 22,000 the radar was tracking it dropped 22,000 feet and then it made some swerves it looked like the captain was trying to take it to the right to the left to maybe trying to avoid hitting uh, trying to get it out of the water especially but trying to get to some place or there was a struggle now they are very sure this is a terrorist attack they it took them till about maybe six o'clock this morning to verify that they feel like it is a terrorist attack because it had just had an overhaul or you know they I mean inspection that happened because before it uh, before it got to Paris there were other stops 
And in those stops, one of those stops, there's a mandatory, they have to do the review of the plane. So they go over the plane and uh, they check everything. And so they weren't, they weren't finding anything. They check either, either, either for bombs or for, uh, you know, something that may be going wrong or deteriorating on the plane or something, whatever. But anyway, so they didn't find any of that. So now they're going after the last people that had their hands on that plane. And they're looking very hard at, at that. So now they have, they're backward now going through their, in, uh, the inspections and, and what happened and starting to find out who had their hands on this. And so, so many things they have to try and think about. One thing though, a silver lining, if there is one, is that this has a capacity of, of, uh, three times the amount of people that were in the plane at the time. There were 59 people. Those included babies. And, um, so, it was it was very sad that this many people lost their lives, and with the uh, with the idea that it's a terrorist attack, and the Egyptians are saying that probably puts a nail in the coffin of our t our tourism because of so many things that have happened, and Paris especially things that are originating out of Paris what's happened in Paris have had so many terroristic attacks that uh, this is getting scary to think about. I think I'm going to go see the Eiffel Tower. Well, I'm going to think twice about that now until they uh, clamp down. And I know they're trying extremely hard to get this under control, but uh, it keeps happening. So anyway, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the families of those who are on that flight and how, I mean, how desperately uh, they want to know something. They want to, some answers. And of course, they're always holding out hope that maybe they're, loved ones survived and that's a horrible thing that they're having to go through right now but uh anyway that's uh, that's our world today and those are things that are going on and it's just it's extremely extremely sad so um that was what you'll be hearing and it is kind of overshadowed the campaign which i'm sure all of you are like yay but i mean sad it's a terrible thing that happened but you just would like something to distract from, you know, from that happening. And I see, and I thought it was going to be that Texas would be in the news because of all the rain that we were supposed to have had. The last two days, there was not one drop of rain where I was. And they kept, <coughs> and they kept saying, this is, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And so today, uh, this afternoon at 12 o'clock, they're promising we are going to get all this rain now. And, uh, so we're back in the news. They they are talking about it a little bit, but uh, this this uh, tragic event is certainly over overpowered. But of course, it doesn't mean that the Sydney Cochran show will talk about this tragic event that's happened. The whole show. No, we're going to talk about other things that are going on. And I've got a question that I want to ask uh, Richard because yesterday we talked so much about the lies that we're being told as a country not just to you or to me, it's to everybody and that how we're dealing with it. A lot of us have gotten so apathetic about it. We don't even care. I don't care what's happening uh, and people lying. I just want to get something over with. I just want to get this person in office. I don't care if they're lying. It doesn't matter. Everybody lies. But when someone you love, someone that you might be dating and you catch them in a lie, how, how do you deal with that? Now, Richard's got this beautiful, wonderful, uh, new girlfriend relatively new and uh they are just the cutest couple in the whole world when you see them you just have to go oh they're so cute together but we know how richard is we've heard more from richard's side of course than we have holly but and we know that uh that he has got some quirks and really weird but he's a millennialist does he not care if she if she if he catches her in a lie. That's what I'll find out when we come back. It's about the lying game. All right, guys, you're listening to The Cindy Cochran Show. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812.
the Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. You know, you talk, you're listening to the Sydney Cochran Show that he was right. I just wanted to correct that. But uh, I was going to say, we talked so much yesterday about the lies that we hear from our government, uh, from our candidates and stuff that they get caught in. And it's a different time. It's a different era. You know, the, way back when, when these candidates could say just about anything and everybody believed everything, there wasn't a way to, to uh, fact check a lot of the things that they said. So... Or people didn't wouldn't even think about doing that, you know. So it it, it was kind of like two people said, "Well, it's a politician. Anything that they open their mouth, they're lying," and they've gotten pretty well um, served right on that. But I I think that we hold them to a, a different standard, and we get so sick of it and get so I don't know just fatigued with all of it that we don't care. But when it's someone that you love, someone that you uh, hold in you know very high esteem in your life you want to make sure that person is always telling you the truth you just want to it's and i'm telling you if if the candidates and all the people and even the american people look at these people lying and being caught all the time doesn't make you feel like you know i'm so glad i have this person who would never lie to me at, at all and we've all lied we've done those things we've talked about that i'm i'm not stupid about that i know that I have lied and you have lied and uh, I don't believe there's any such thing as a you know like a dirty lie a white lie or a political lie I think it's just a lie it's not the truth and you can't be trusted just like this new commercial that Hillary Clinton put out this hit hit piece this hit commercial uh, about the women thing about how he's so bad to women so they have all these women wearing a shirt with a big face of Donald Trump on it and then they're playing sound bites from things that he has said about women and and most of them are things that he has said about women but the last one the, it's an older lady she's wearing this face and the sound bite they chose he says go F yourself and, and it beeps it out in the commercial of course but Donald Trump tweeted out and said okay Hillary you know like the that statement that I made I was talking about China and we were having I was having some kind of discussion about China and if they didn't want to do what I said for them to do I said that so I wasn't talking about women so there she's caught again it's just like the New York Times being caught about their tried to do a hit piece on on Donald Trump about the way he treats women but now Hillary's in the same boat so it's going to be great. You keep doing enough of these things, Hillary, and I've tried so hard to help you with things. I've tried so hard. Here I was trying to help you with, you know, don't wear red lipstick unless you want to accentuate the lines around your mouth. Watch your pantsuits. When they get too low and you're, you have this A-shaped form, it's not good. But when you started wearing the thick collars, that was good. I just, I've tried to help you. I've just about given up on you. You don't call and you don't let me try to advise you. Okay, well, you're in it. So, sorry. And today, the new, uh, the new poll came out. Donald Trump is now beating you by five points. That's, you know, I, I was trying to help you. Okay, all right, fine. I'm going to start uh, having Donald call me and we'll talk about his hair. Okay, anyway. Now, I, I, t I teased with, I wanted to ask Richard this question about his girlfriend, Holly. She is so gorgeous, guys. She, I mean, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. And you certainly understand why he would want uh, to date her and be attracted to her. And she's smart. She's uh, even still going to school. She's, uh, now what is she going to school right now for? No, she's done with school. Uh, I thought she was still right taking now. studying. She's, she's going for RN. She has her LVN. Oh, that's right. Okay, she has and LVN. She's going for her RN. And she works at the pediatrics. She currently is working. Uh, she starts work. She went to full time student for a semester, uh, and then now she is waiting for entry for the next step in the, uh, I guess, in the academic world. So she's working at a hospice right now. She is okay. Yeah. And she works with and children, right? No, she used to work at Texas uh, Texas Children's Oncology. Okay, she's the know one administrating she... and taking care of the cancer babies. Right, right. Uh, brilliant. I mean, she's brilliant, okay? And with a heart and uh, for what she does, just amazing. So then you have on the other side of the spectrum, Richard, who 
pretty much epitomizes the millennialist. He's very self-absorbed. And I'm not saying, I'm just saying this is what, on the surface, if you meet Richard, this is, you get this feeling. But we know that Richard has a big heart and that Richard does care. And he just tries to put up this bluster that he doesn't. That's my feeling. And so he's, he he's very regimented. He wants his women to be regimented as well. He likes them to fill out a form about the fact whether it's okay for him to go out with his friends. Well, that was a joke. Yes or no? No, I, just, <laughs> no. I remember you telling me that you would you wanted to have a schedule of what you were going to be doing, and you'd send her email or schedules. This is what we'll be doing, and this is what I'm doing. And didn't you start that in the beginning of the relationship? That well, yeah, I mean, I've done that before. Yeah, that's very. I mean, that's very regimented. That's so unromantic, but uh, but I don't know. But he's cute enough where he can get away with it. That's the thing. If you if you look well, good I, enough, you can get away with that stuff. Well, I think when it comes, what are you trying to ask? Well, I'm getting like, ready. I'm I'm just building. I'm just trying to characterize the two of you, and then okay. All right. So Richard has this beautiful, wonderful, smart girlfriend. Richard, you do you ever feel like if she if you ever caught her in a lie, that would be it? Her in a lie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, no, no, not at all. Okay, so that that doesn't bother you. You don't you don't lose trust at that point when you find out that they were able to lie to you and you believed it and you went with it. That doesn't bother you. No. Richard, I don't. I don't think that's right. I think it also depends on what the lie is. I mean, she's already li – I've caught her in lies before already, but they're so oh, so minuscule it's laughable. And that's why I even told her. I go, why would you even want to lie about that? Right. So she's just trying so. to cover up something so you wouldn't get mad or that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's one, that's one way. But when you work with somebody, somebody in your business – now, if you found them lying to you and that you couldn't trust them with things – that you that you said don't tell anybody or that they come and tell you this happened and then you find out later that never happened or they've lied about what you have said to somebody else and discredit you how does that affect your relationship with that person after that it's not really happened because either if they're liars i kind of dis distance myself from them oh. Okay, you distance so, yourself. You, and I mean, like, I've met habitual liars, mm -hmm. and those are the I, – I hate being around those people just because you can never progress anything because you just never know. I mean, there were several people who I knew in college. Every time I was hanging out with them, spend time – or any time, I, everything he said, I was like, is this guy just making this all up? <laughs> and it got – I mean, I don't know. I bet you've met people. I bet people who are listening now have met people. Like, it's just – they kind of make stuff up, and it's just they go with it. And that's just right. who their personality is. And I just – you just distance yourself from those kind of people because what positive things can they bring to your life? And with a woman in that regard, if, if it's something that's bad enough where she needs to lie – and I don't – and it ends up hurting somebody or hurting me, then i mm -hmm. got to question that because, I mean, it's all about intentions. And you can – I mean, I, you could lie for somebody to protect them, and I respect right. that. Uh, but when you when you end up hurting somebody and you know it's going to hurt somebody and you and you lie about it and you continue to lie about it, I'm just kind of like, well, I'm just going to distance myself from it because if it affects my life and my lifestyle like that, then, yeah, you just, you just keep it away from you because nothing can come good from it. Well, I, I I think you're right. I mean, I think that's why the American people have become, become so jaded and just like, I don't, I don't believe anything they say. If you do that, if you actually do it, I'll believe your actions. But if you just talk about it and it never happens, then I'm not. It's kind of like, you know, um, <laughs> when you ask people to do something for you and they just keep putting it off and putting it off and there's no lie to it. It's just that. You feel like this person said they're going to do this and they never do it, and so I'm through with them. I'm I'm done with them, even though you yourself have done the same thing. I mean, think about it. You, you wouldn't say to me, Cindy, I have never lied. I have never not. Yeah, but you. we're also talking about what level of people are lying at. Like, I've never really lied to somebody to their face. To intentionally hurt them or really to protect anything. I mean, I've never really been in a relationship where I felt I needed to lie about something. Mm hmm. Well, see, I think you start off a relationship, it seems to me, what you say, you say to the girl. Like, you really want to put everything out there 
up front and say, now, if you can handle all of this and you still want to go out with me, then we're cool. Because you want to make sure that when you act like a brat sometimes, that well, no, I've I told noticed, you that's no, why I, I notice, am. you know, when, with my relationships, they, they go, well, you'll be you. And that's kind of their response to everything that's kind of anything situational. Like Richard's just going to be Richard. He's going to do what he wants. Oh, and okay. yeah, I mean, I and I think that's in, that's kind of displayed to them after a while. After spending time together, they get that you know I'm I'm a when it comes to certain things, I'm a no nonsense. Just just tell me if you're not going to tell me, then don't worry about it. Like I don't worry about it if you're not going to worry about it. Uh -huh. And then you never say it to a woman because you know, it's like oh, okay, good. And then two weeks later, they'll worry about it again. And, and I'm just like, all right, we're still talking about this. Like, why are we just moving on? <laughs> and yeah, Richard, but you know, sometimes you. You've said things to girls, uh, or they've told you something that they have done, and they were afraid to tell you, or they hesitated to tell you. They didn't want you to know this ab about them. They thought it would change the way you thought about them. And I was just shocked that they would tell you that, and you're like, I don't care. That was what you did, you know, a month ago. I, so what? I didn't even know you then. And, and you were able to take it like that. And those girls fretted over telling you. And you're so. Uh, I don't well, care. I think what's important to me is if you do not feel comfortable enough or confident enough to talk to me about something that is very serious, then our relationship isn't a good one. I'm not doing my job; it's making you feel safe about things. About talking to you about anything, you know, yeah. like if if you're in trouble, and I, I've been com not complimented, but people have told me it's like you'd be the guy I would call if I was in serious trouble, right? Because I know I can trust you with certain things, even if they're illegal or whatever. And I was like, oh, I guess that's a good thing. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, that, that's the kind of relationship I try that's to good. I try to develop with somebody. I want them to feel safe and understanding that you know the world is a big place, and the way we handle things, you never know. And it's always, to me, in my experience, it's always better to share the experience with somebody right? than, than hold in what's going on. Because, I think that's great because it, it can only just hurt you. And well, well, if you keep, yeah, if everything is all laid out in the open, and you feel like with Holly, she feels like she can tell you everything, yeah. anything, and it and it doesn't, uh, and it doesn't seem like it bothers you. You don't hold on to things, no, do you? You, you're, and when I say self-absorbed, I'm. It's not a bad. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Well, it's just that you're you're very concentrated on things that are affecting you, and that you've got to get done. And that, I mean, that's uh, really the only time I get upset about things. If it like, I know it sounds selfish, but if it affects me or somebody I love, that's when I get upset. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is this is ridiculous, or yeah, you know, you intentionally hurt this per hurt this person, so you need to apologize and make up for it because, right. I mean, you intentionally did. I understand accidents happen. I understand you're put in a situation where you felt like you needed to lie about something, but I mean, but but do you hold do you hold politicians to a higher standard that they should know better? Well, you know, in the current weather of politicians, the strangest thing to me about politicians today is I never really see anything that's concrete about change. So, for example, like if I'm running for mayor, I need to bring up, oh, hey, this is what I've done for the community right now. Right. Because if you're right. in a political position, you're working on improving the community. But, right. you know, if you see all these people talking about vote for me, but what have you done? For me, you know, me. yeah. And like it exactly. might not even be directly related to being a mayor but still, it's like, hey, you know, I've helped bring, uh, I've worked a thousand hours at this nonprofit. Here's the proof. Mm -hmm. You know, get involved with them. You know, that kind of well, attitude. You, you but would judge their character on, on, on their what actions. They, well, what, what they've, they've done. Been doing. Yeah, because that's I mean, exactly Donald right. Trump, to me, if you look at his history, not very good. You in know, what he's way? been he's successful in business, and then he's unsuccessful in business. So it's like it's basically a snake eating itself. But, and that's, but he has the experience of failure, and that's good. Well, that's, no, that's I think that's very good. But and he I still also he think, didn't give up. He didn't give up. He still kept persevering. And uh, yeah, but how many people did he have to bury under him to to keep himself up? Well, I, mean, I think he as a and it's, it's in business world. Like you got to make decisions right. that affect a lot of people. That's right. I think in his history, if somebody wrote, there's more. To give you an example, if you look at literature, anything that's been published, there's more negative things written about Trump than positive ones. And to me, that kind of says a lot about someone's character, especially in the business world. Like, I mean, I'm sure everyone has their skeletons in their closet and whatnot, but mm -hmm. he's pretty much been in the spotlight his entire business career right. as a negative. 
you know, Trump's at it again. He, that's not that. Well, that's really not true because the New York, he, he's come in and taken buildings, taken areas of real estate, and he's built it up, and it's been good for New York. It hasn't been bad for New York that that he's built these things up, and that he can he can uh, do the business model that makes uh, that causes success. He can he knows how to do that. He knows how to hire people, fire people, and he knows how to. Uh, Work a business. The other politicians can't bring that to the. Well, to I, the that's table. what I'm saying. I think when you look at the history of Donald Trump compared to, say, Hillary Clinton, I mean, that's that's really where we're all judging these people from. Is like, what have you, like, where have you done in the past? Where have you been? And things like that. I mean, I think Donald Trump's a breath of fresh air because he's not a career politician, right? Uh, and I think that's, and I I highly encourage anybody to be in part of the of the political system here because if you look at the House of Representatives, I think it's like 72% are lawyers, and then mm -hmm. the rest are career politicians. Right. right. So it's just kind of like, so you know, where, on... where's the diversity? Why are we having these people vote on education when clearly they're not even teachers? So it's right. kind of silly to to really put everything in their hands. But in that case, you have to look to who they surround themselves with and who they're using as advisors, and if they if those advisors fit with what you think. He's given out a, a list of 11 people that uh, he would consider and vet for the Supreme Court, and that's pretty interesting how he did that, and that's kind of taken a lot of conservatives back. So anyway, GOP elite, you are in my sights. We're going to talk about you when we get back. Hey, don't go away. You're listening to Cindy Cochran's show, and uh, you know these are just a few public service announcements. Listen to them carefully, and then we'll be right back. The Cindy Cochran Show. Real Reality Radio. Hi, I'm Mike Sasser, your host of the Health Hour, right here on Long Star Community Radio. I'd like to invite you to tune in to my live show each Wednesday starting at 1 p.m. I like to say it's an hour of health news you can use. Be a part of the conversation by going to MikeSasser.com and clicking on Contact Mike for my email, Facebook, and Twitter links. The Health Hour with Mike Sasser every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on Long Star Community Radio, your local source for healthy living. The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. The Cindy Cochran Show. Thank you so much for listening. It is Thursday. <laughs> Excuse me, and we have just one more day, and we are we're there. We're on the weekend, so uh, you can stay with it. You can uh, you can be uh, here tomorrow at ten to eleven, and uh, we got lots more to say. And listen, please go to my website, um, website, my Facebook page, and uh, give me some suggestions of, of things that you like to talk about, or if you would like to. Uh, to write whatever you want to write i will read it on the air and we will communicate it'll be it'll be wonderful we've been talking about lying and liars and when you uh i mean and god said he hated a liar and that was someone that that word translates into a continuum of lying those people that just cannot you know cannot stop they are just just like uh, richard was talking about there's habitual liars and it's the only way they can you know live now you know how they talk about you know you uh what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive yeah yeah it's true because trying to backtrack a lie when somebody catches you on it it's not a fun thing to do um and and i know we've all just made some mistakes that we didn't you know even we misspoke we thought that's what the person has said or that was our impression of it you should never even spread that because that's going to come back to haunt you as well we uh, we also want to uh, talk about you know, you know that I am a I'm a conservative Republican, and I have just uh, enjoyed so much this the campaign thing. I really have liked it. I know a lot of you are just so sick and tired of it. And if I just start talking about it, you're going to just like click off. But I've got I've got to talk about this because it helps me. It's so cathartic. Now the GOP has just gone crazy. The establishment whoever that all may be but they've come to the surface and uh, like bill crystal and some of these people that are trying the dump trump still still we're just you know like 
uh, not even a month away from going to the convention, and they're still trying so hard to, uh, in their dream world, that they're going to be able to bring somebody else to the table that will be a third party that will that will be that will be it. And everybody said, "Are you stupid? You do not have." the time to get someone in that position before the general election that could beat Hillary or uh, or Donald. But see, here's what they know, and that a lot of us didn't know until now, is that if they can take enough votes away, if they found somebody that they, they could take enough votes away from Donald and enough votes away from Hillary, where either one of them could not could not reach the 270 mark to be able to, you know, have you have to have 270 uh, to be able to be president. But if they could take both of them down, where either one of them would not hit that that number, then it would go to the Congress, and then the Congress would have to decide who that who the president is going to be, because they will then they can nominate somebody, they can take somebody from their their own and the whatever they can they can nominate somebody else and somebody else could become president other than the two nominees it's i mean it's a constitutional thing so they're thinking they can get around this by uh doing some some skullduggery uh acts and, and make this where we we can dump trump that's what they're thinking i am so sick it's just making me sick to my stomach to listen to these guys and with their horrible attitude so mad that they've got somebody there that is not you know doing all the rules and uh, adhering to the rules of of the conservative republicans or just the republican elite and i just I, i'm just shocked by it. i just had no idea that people like jeb bush saying that he would never he's not going to vote for uh for trump he's just going to sit it out and so George is the same way, and and his mom and his dad, and they say we're going to sit it out. Now he, Trump says some nasty things about uh, Jeb, and uh, Jeb had a lot of money thrown at him trying to get him to be the nominee. They thought that was just a walk, a walk in the park to make that happen. It did not happen. So there you have it. You have this GOP, just the should be called the grumpy old party, about them trying to. Uh, totally disregard the will of the people. Now, all those all those guys before before this got to a you know it was a seventeen man race, so they had plenty of time, plenty of vetting to do, letting the people look at these these people. We had fifty jillion of these stupid debates that went on and on and on, and but who came out the winner? Trump did. Everybody he got rid of everybody, and Trump did. And Trump has won in states that Republicans have never won in before. Now he's plus five in the positive side of uh, of Hillary Clinton, who everybody just assumed the coronation would happen. But it hasn't happened. And Bernie Sanders is making a great case for the fact that just hold off on that because I'm not going to drop out of this until the last vote is cast. And so I don't. And you feel you feel bad for them because you feel like there's no way. But they're going to go to that convention, and it's going to be disruptive. And everybody's been talking about the the Republicans being bad. No, 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 no. They they've got plenty to worry about themselves. And Barbara Boxer was booed off the stage, and she said, "This may turn out to be another 1968 Chicago convention for the Democrats, which was extremely disruptive." So. It's it's extremely interesting in that sense what's going on, and so amusing on the GOP side where these guys literally are trying the best in backroom meetings and all that to try and find somebody to you know drag out there and uh, and bring and bring another option to the party. Not gonna happen. Just give up, give in, and start you know, coalescing around your, your presumptive nominee and help him, help him. He will sit down and talk to you, but you guys are acting ridiculous. And I'm ashamed when I see and know that you're, you wear the same name that I think, you know, I'm associated with the Republicans and you're just acting horrible. The Democrats are now, you know, about 
about there, so I'm sure there are a lot of Democrats that are thinking, I'm so ashamed of the way y'all are acting. Where do we go? And so they better have a big write-in line on that on their ballots because I feel like people, I can remember when I first started voting and seeing that people were writing in like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and things like that just to, because it, it was their protest, way of protesting a vote. But anyway, and speaking of that, it is early voting, guys. It's early voting. So you need to be out there. You're voting for the mayor and uh, judgeships that are going on. But I, I, I was trying to get Powell or uh, Gentry to come in and talk about why they should be the mayor of Conroe. So I will try. I'm going to keep trying until the last minute. Maybe I'll just show up uh, at their office or something. That would be fun. Okay, guys, you're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. We'll be right back. Don't you go away. There's so much more to say. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we are looking for talk show hosts and volunteer DJs for our music shows. Are you interested in having your own talk show on Lone Star, or have you always wanted to live out your dreams of being a music DJ? With the addition of Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and video aspects of our talk shows, we are needing people to grow with us. If you or someone you know might be interested, uh, please contact us online at IRLoneStar.com slash contact us or call the station at 936-647-5747 for more information. Back on the Cindy Cochran Show. I am, uh, I'm Cindy Cochran. It works out well that way, right? Yeah, Cindy Cochran Show, yeah. Listen, guys, so I'm here Monday through Friday, and we're here from 10 to 11 every morning so that we can bring you some uh, national news and some stuff that's you know locally happening happening and right now big thing is that we are uh in the middle of a runoff and this is early voting for that so you guys get out there and early vote before it starts raining again because it's going to happen this afternoon it's going to happen so go now go go no no wait wait till the show's over and then you can go one more segment um uh, hey brianna donahoe you know, I'm sitting here bragging like, hey, I got it. We can talk over the over my uh, Facebook page. Just give me, go ahead, send those messages, and I'll respond and all that. And there's a, res there's a response from yesterday. I'm trying to figure out what this is. I think it's today's response. That was yesterday's. And Brianna Dunno said to, I, I'm see, I understand this, to Connor, because Connor Halstead was here. And Connor Halstead made the statement after... Richard uh, was bragging about he how he's got his woman you know you know wrapped around his finger and and he's got strategies that keep those women you know in line, and he says, "Man, I need to talk to you, Richard." And Brianna Donahoe had uh, had put out there saying, "Do not talk to Richard," and she was trying to get that message to Connor to save him, and I didn't make it. And she just came back and and uh, she just Facebooked me and said exactly so I knew that I thought were well, you talking to me like I shouldn't talk to Richard like you're right about that I got that but uh, then I realized that Connor was also here and said like don't like don't let him she had also uh, had said I think something you were telling a story and and she put she sent me a, a message saying good catch on the cuss word Richard I'm trying to remember the story you were what you were talking about where you uh where you almost said a bad word, and uh, that's not you. Usually, you never do anything like that. And if you remember what that story is, well, that's why they need to listen to the archives. Okay, so you know, because Richard and I have had an argument after something. I said, I, I said, I never said that, or I did say that. And he says, um, and he says, yes, you do. We're gonna have to listen to the archive. And <laughs> let's see. No, I caught myself. She, you did. Well, what was it? Do you I don't not remember? remember? I just remember he's going like, ooh, that was a close one. Oh, okay. But the great thing about those things, you just let it slide. But it no was one, Tuesday, no yeah. No one needs to talk about it again. <laughs> but that was Tuesday. Now, see, you're telling me i got to watch what I'm going to say because when we go FM, we've got, you know, people overseeing us, so we have to make sure. And I, I've never said 
a curse word. I've probably named body parts that probably were uncomfortable for people to listen to and things like that, or body functions, but I don't think I've ever said, you know, like a, a bad word or anything like that. But she said it was Tuesday when we were talking, because um, you and I were just talking about a lot of different things on Tuesday, and I was really ragging on the on the Democrats at that point. So I don't know what you said that would have even, you know, brought that to your brain, but we usually don't have any problem with that but then when we when we do get have restrictions that's going to be difficult that really is going to be difficult so and and she has uh she's lectured me also on a facebook page uh message she gave me just a minute ago that i need to be watching all the time i it is hard that's like multitasking in my brain to be talking about constantly you know like i'm talking about a conversation or talking about not a conversation but uh some article or something that one of the parties have done and then to look down and read what somebody has just posted i am so bad about that i need to i need to wait till the break i'll read what they say then come back and comment on i may not be able to do it like immediately so <laughs> okay Okay, see, I say funny stuff and you miss it. You do, Brianna. You, you, you actually do, and I, and I'm sorry. I, I go back like, you know, during the night and I'm going through different uh, posts and stuff, and I go like, oh shoot, she said that would have been great to talk about. So I'm, I'm gonna be better. I, I've got to, I got to train myself to do this before we go FM, so this is the way we're gonna have to communicate, and. You know, and it's because I know you, Brianna, I can hear your voice inflection in your text. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, it's usually because, oh, is there, no, I don't think so. Okay, Richard is saying I'm getting, um, I'm getting a call. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Uh, okay, I'll, if you're calling me, text me through Facebook my Facebook page and I'll know uh, what you're calling about okay anyway so um, man <laughs> that squirrel moment there just messed me up so okay well I'm gonna remind you that on Monday this is happening on Monday Mondays are so much fun now because Bob Berry is bringing to us a real Live, not live, but a real crime scene that happened here in our area, and it's out of the statute of limitations, statute of limitations, and he can tell, talk about it, and he can bring us all the clues, what he walked in on, what he saw, and all that, and I can ask him questions as the detective would that would come in uh, because they were at the scene first, and the detective says, you know, like uh, uh, how many dead bodies would we got. Uh, did uh, was the door locked from the inside were the windows all like you know that kind of thing and but we can find out more and more and he'll give us a little bit more a little bit more until we can maybe figure out who it was that did this and you know, speculate about it he's not giving you names or anything like that but this is so much fun it's like clue but this really did happen and so you've got to be with us. And, and to even spice it up more, we have Deanie Harmon that's going to be with us. And Deanie Harmon, she's been on before. She's just amazing. People love her. And she is a 17-year-old vet. No, she's not a 17-year-old vet. She is a 17-year veteran of undercover narcotics um, uh, in the agency of undercover narcotics in Houston. Now, you know, it's Houston, you know, it's like bad stuff that she has been involved in and undercover with. And so she's been in the force for a long, long time. She's retired now, but she's going to come over because she has so much fun talking about the crazy things that happen on the show. She said it's fun. You never know what you're going to ask or what we're going to say. So it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, imagine. Uh, not for my listeners. But anyway, uh, she will be here and we'll go through that and she will uh, will help me ask Bob questions and maybe teach me how to ask the questions to find out actually how this happened now I love I don't know if you do but I love forensic file I love the uh, 48 hours and all that so I, I love all those kind of shows and I get hooked on those and it makes me so mad like okay I gotta stop watching these stop it and then they'll come in and they'll give just enough in the explanation in the beginning that I I can't I can't turn away it's just 
It's just amazing. And the reenactments that they have and, and all that. Uh, now, Cindy and Samuel love this, too. But I, I have to be careful because they're, sometimes they show real stuff and you go like, yeah. I, um, but they... They think it's fun, too. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing on Mondays. And Bob is uh, searching through the files and finding finding uh, the clues for us. So we may call it the Clueless uh, segment. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to have a good time, and you've got to join us. And then we're going to have, later in the week, we're going to have this woman who is dealing with the beginning stages of Alzheimer. And uh, she's very active and all that. But she, this this is the disease she has, and she's talking about what they're finding, what they know about it, and, and there's some hope in the future. But we're going to be talking to her and her husband. So that's going to be fun. Okay, guys, we're out, and uh, I just hope you have a great day. Go out and make somebody happy. Choose to be happy. It's your choice. It's your choice. And you'll uh, you'll just you'll love yourself for it. You just love yourself for it. You've been listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. Thank you so much for listening. I love you, Mom. We're out.